Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Greetings and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings on the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is part of my series on input-output I.O. and the and Oracle PLSQL. The focus of this lesson is manipulating B files with DBMS lob. But when you're working with large binary files, it doesn't work at all, and that's where DBMS lob and B files come in. So with DBMS lob, generally you can manipulate lobs, large objects, and they can be character lobs, clobs, they can be binary lobs, blobs, and they can be B files, binary files. So the idea is that you would be working with very large binary chunks of data, images, Word documents, spreadsheets, etc. But they don't have to be. You can actually manipulate any sort of file as a B file. <clears throat> now inside PLSQL there's a data type called B file, and that's actually a pointer to an operating system file. And please note that I'm going to be covering some of the features of DBMS lob, not all of them, and this definitely does not constitute a training on working with lobs per se. It's a very big, complex topic. What I'm going to do is simply introduce you to some of the features related to manipulating B files from within a PLSQL block using DBMS lob. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what you can do with DBMS lob, give you a little bit of a training on working with these kinds of large objects but you'll definitely want to explore the documentation which has a whole book on working with large objects and of course many of the other features of this package. So the B file functionality we're going to look at is how to open and close B files, comparing two B files with a compare procedure, get information about a B file, what is its name and location, does it exist, what is its length, how to read the contents of B files and note their read-only structures, and how to read a B file into a lob to manipulate it further that way, how to perform string operations in string, substring, on a B file. So first of all, open and close B file. Now first, you've got a file sitting out on disk. Let's say in my demo directory, here's a file and I need to work with that as a B file inside PLSQL. So the first thing I'm going to do is call the B file name function to basically get a pointer to this file as a B file type of data. So I declare a variable as type B file, I call B file name and I get the pointer to that file and then I work with that pointer inside my code. So does the file exist? DBMS lob dot file exists. Is the file open? File is open and I'll check that status actually before and after I call the file open procedure to actually open the B file that I've pointed to and I can also close the file with file close. Let's take a look. So the same code you saw on the on the PowerPoint call the B file function ask if it exists, check to see if the file is open, then open it, then check again to see if it's open, close it, and check the status once more. I run my code, and I see the following. Does it exist? 1 equals yes. Is it open? 0 is no. Now is it open after I open it? Yes. And is it open after I close it? No. So notice it does return integers, not Boolean values. That's because these functions are designed to be used from within SQL. SQL doesn't know about and can't work with true Booleans. So 1 is true, 0 is false. Note also that I'm taking advantage of a database directory. If you're not familiar with database directories, check out the lesson on in the overview and introduction to util file in which I talk about database directories. But just for a quick reminder, you can create database directory objects in the database. So I've defined one called demo, and it actually points to the directory that contains all the files in the demo zip that you can download from PLSQL Obsession. So it found one of those files <coughs> and then showed whether or not it existed. If I change it to a file name that doesn't exist and do it again, so first of all, I got an error. 
file or lob operation file open failed can't find the file specified so we'll cancel and we should also see that it doesn't exist it exists zero so does it exist zero is it open before the open no so it doesn't give me an error if the file doesn't exist but if I try to open it then I get the error <coughs> and if I try to close a file that hasn't been opened let's see what happens then so close it before I've opened it no problem so those are some of the basic operations to get you started and there are a lot of high-level programs in DVMS Lob to manipulate various kinds of lob objects. You definitely want to check out the package in much more detail than I'm showing you here. One of the nice high-level programs is Compare. So I can say, point to two different clobs, two different B files, open them both, and then ask if they're the same. So call the function Compare, pass the two B files, I can specify which part of the B file I want to do comparisons on. So the amount, the number of bytes that I'll be comparing, and the offsets in each of the files. And then when I'm done, I should close those files. Let's take a look. So in my first block of code, I'm going to open a file file1.txt for write purposes. I'm going to populate the file with util file. I'm going to fill in the first five lines with line 1 and then the word same. And then after that, the next five lines, line and then the line number. And then I'm going to generate a GUID, which is a string that should be a unique value, which means that they should be different. Each line should have a different GUID. And in fact, in file2.txt, <coughs> the first five lines should be exactly the same as in file1 but the last five lines should be different. So I set up two files with some of the same content, some different content. Again, if you've not used util yet, if these are not familiar programs, you should go back and watch my series on util file. Then I'll open both of those files. Well, first of all, I'll get the pointer to the B files in both cases. I'll open each of the files and then I'll examine different portions of the file. So first I'm going to say I only want to look at 33 bytes starting from position 1 and that will fall within the first five lines so those should be the same and then I'll tell it to start at, paid at location 55 for temp 1 <clears throat> and 25 for temp 2 with the same amount of offset and that should show me that they're different and then I'll do an equality check compare the files with a very large amount to make sure I'm getting all of it and the offset set to the default which is 1. I run my code and I see the following. The first two files, the, the first call, compares them and returns 0. They're the same. The second call compared the part of the file that are not the same and that returned 1. The comparison said they're different. And finally when I compare the entire file with my defaults for my starting point then I get that they're different. And we should be able to actually replace this. Let's try one more thing. Replacing that very large number which looks kind of silly doesn't it? With a constant. Let's see. Let's call it my package. So here's the DBMS lob package. Lots and lots of programs, lots and lots of functionality. And there should be a constant here, which allows me to specify simply the maximum size, lob max size right here. So what I'm going to do, instead of hard coding a big fat number, is take that, val that constant out, reference it directly here, and let's do that same thing again. Run the same code. And notice that works as well. Okay, so that's Compare, a very useful program. Get information about a B file. You can get the name of the file associated with the B file, get the length of the file, does the file exist, 
and is the file open? A couple of these we've actually already seen. So I get a pointer to the file with the B file name, and I ask, does the file exist? I ask, is it open? I get the length of the file. I get the name of the file, which actually gets the directory and the name, and I'll display those values. Run my code, and there's the contents. It's stored in the demo directory. There's the name of the file. It has 3253 bytes. Does it exist? Yes. Is it open? No. It's kind of interesting how Oracle passes back these different return codes for different scenarios. reading the contents of a B file. So I want to look at the contents of the file, not just open it, close it, see if it's open. And for that, I can use the DBMS lob read program. So what I'll do is get a pointer to my B file. I'll open the file. And then I can call the read procedure to specify the amount that I want to get, the starting location, and the buffer that will receive it. Whoops. What happened? My apologies. Let's zoom back over there. I must have pressed the wrong key. There we go. So you can read, you can use dbmslob.read to read into a raw or a varchar2 variable, but that's with clobs. When you're working with B files, you can only read into a raw data type because B files are binary files. You can pass it along to a blob or B file pointer, and the amount is in out. In other words, the amount that I specify right here cannot be a literal value. It's going to return the actual number of bytes read. So I'm going to say I want 100. How many did I actually get? Let's try it out. So get a pointer to my B file. Declare the contents, which is raw. Declare the amount that I'm going to be requesting 100 bytes. I open my file. I call read. I specify the file that I want to read from, the amount I want to read, the offset, I'm going to start from location 1, and then the buffer to retrieve it, and then I can display the contents. And when I'm done, I close my file. Run my script, and because I had this word highlighted, Toad tried to run just end and it didn't work, so let's do that again with nothing highlighted. And I see these 100 characters from my B file obviously presented as raw data. Not very interesting to look at, but at least you can see that I got those values back. <coughs> Some other B file operations you might find helpful. I can read a B file into a blob or a clob and then do other manipulation with it from there. I can perform in-string operations. I can say, well, you know, does this string exist in my B file? I can even pull out chunks of my B file using substring. So get a pointer to my file. I've declared a clob to retrieve the value as a clob, and then a bunch of other variables I'll be using below. So let's take a look. First of all, I've declared a clob, but I need to create it as a temporary clob. So that's what the dbms lob create temporary does. Otherwise, I will not be able to use this clob. I open my file for read-only access. I load the clob from the file. So I specify the clob that's the destination. I specify the B file, that's the source. How much do I want to get? Uh, give me everything. The destination offset is where it's going to be positioned into the clob. The source offset is where I'm going to read from in the original B file. And the CSID is something that I'm not going to get into right now. You can check it out in the documentation. The language context I'll just set to zero to start with. And the warning, if a warning comes back, we can take a look at it. So the, that after I call that, I can check the length of the clob, so get length, and that will demonstrate that I did retrieve some information. Then, dbms lob instring is just like the instring of a, of a varchar2. I can specify the B file by location, the pattern I'm looking for, the offset in the string, in the, in the B file, where do I want to start my search, and the nth occurrence. And if it returns a value greater than zero, it'll tell me that it found that string. And then I can use substring as well. So 
DBMS lob substring will work with clobs and blobs and B files. I can tell it the amount I want and where to start. I run my code and there's my substring. There's my clob length, the entire length of the file, and it didn't show me found 123 because it didn't find 123 in the, in the file, but it certainly did run the in-string program. Now if I hadn't created the temporary clob, watch what happens. Invalid lob locator. So whenever you get an invalid lob locator and you're working with clobs in your PL SQL code, that's an indication that you forgot to create the temporary clob. So do that. In addition, it turns out you cannot load the clob from the file until the, lo the B file is actually opened explicitly. And that's what this message tells us. So I've got to open it. I've got to create the temporary clob, and then I can load the clob from file. Some conclusions. Text files are generally able to be manipulated with util files, so you're not going to be using B files unless you've got some large, usually binary files, that need to be worked with in your application. In that case, DBMS lob and the B file data type offers a much better solution. DBMS lob offers a wide range of functionality. I'm just touching on it very lightly in this talk. And you should just consider it an introduction to both the concept generally of lobs and B files, and also the starting point for an exploration if you start to need to manipulate these large binary files in your application.